July the 14th, 1789, storming of the Bastille. French Revolution was at its height and marks the beginning of the end of the monarchy in Europe. A new form of government was needed. The ideas of the following philosophers had a major impact on the formation of a new government. Thomas Hobbes was an English philosopher best known um, today for his work on political philosophy. Leviathan was an established foundation for most of Western political philosophy from the perspective of social contract theory. Hobbes was a champion of absolutism for the sovereign, but also developed some fundamentals of European liberal thought. For example, the right of the individual, the natural equality of all men, and the liberal interpretation of laws which leaves people free to do whatever the law does not, to, uh, does not forbid. Thomas Hobbes was one of the populist founders of the modern political philosophy, with his understanding that all human beings obey the same physical laws which still influence today's political philosophy. Leviathan was written during English Civil War and Hobbes postulates what life would be like without government. This condition he calls the state of nature, because in this state each person would have a right to everything in the world. According to Hobbes, the sovereign controls civil, military, judicial and ecclesiastical power. Um, John Locke was born on August 29, 1632 in Ringdon in England. His thoughts and opinions were the start of liberalism. He, he published essays and treaties um, which brought completely new thoughts to the society. The Glorious Revolution in 1688, based on his political thoughts and opinions, the people wanted a change and John Locke gave it to them. His conception of man was that a man is a state of natural freedom in order their actions and dispose of their, of their position. His conception of man was that a man is a state of natural freedom to order their actions and dispose of their positions without the will of any other man. And he said that all men are born to the same advantages of nature. That was a completely new thought. No one ever dared to say anything like that. The upper class was shocked. The lower class celebrated John Locke as a hero. And saying that all men um, are born to the same advantages of nature wasn't enough for luck. He said no one should have more than another and everyone should have this, the use of the same facilities. People should be a community for a comfortable, safe and peace-able living. The function of a sovereign, so long, is to subordinate the different ranks of men. John Locke said that the rules and laws should be made by the government and that a state needs an absolute leader. Charles de Secondon was a French political thinker who lived during the Enlightenment and had a theory that power should be separated and that the different branches of state authority should not be allowed to be united. He published his theory in 1748 in the Spirit of Laws. Secondon thought that every man shall not be afraid of another in the right government and that every man should be free. In large estates, though, being a free agent is not possible. So Secondon says they should transact through representatives they elected themselves, and these representatives acted only for a limited time. They had the capacity of discussing public affairs. The executive power should be in the hands of a monarch and committed to a certain number of people selected from the legislative body. The executive should regulate time of meeting and the duration of assemblies. The legislative should be formed by nobles because otherwise they wouldn't support the state, which was necessary in Secondon's opinion. However, they should only be allowed to have the power of re resolving and rejecting. The judicative should be formed by judges who ha sh should be of the same ranks as the accused and the tribunals and judgments ought to be fixed. The judges still know to be fixed. If the three branches acted separately and split the power, then liberty was possible, second law thought. 
The social contract by Jean-Jacques Rousseau inspired and influenced political reforms or revolutions in Europe, especially in the French Revolution. He argued against the idea that monarchs were empowered to legislate only people who are so and have their own power right. Everyone has to put himself and his will under the common will and subordinate himself under the common wealth to escape from illegitimate forms of tyranny. Therefore, man must enter a social contract with others. Like Rousseau said once, man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. So man can only be really free if he gives his individual freedom to the common and everyone's power stands under the supreme direction of the general will. Rousseau argues that it's illogical for a man to surrender his freedom for slavery. He must have a right to choose laws under which he lives on his own. The state will still make decisions for the common will, but everyone still but everyone is still an individual and indivisible part of the whole system. Rousseau also had the opinion that everyone is naturally good, but coined by society, and only his contract makes living possible. Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, this famous French philosopher, lived in the 19th century. He was born in 1809 and died in 1865. He died in Paris, but he in prison, but he didn't die because of bad um, prison conditions. He died of natural causes. He was treated well in this prison because of his high rank in society. He wrote some famous texts and um, he, there he, he describes um, his ideas of authority. His ideas were that um, no one should have power over anyone. So um, everyone should rule himself or herself um, by himself. Um, yes, so he's against all kinds of authority and he's also against all kinds of states. So um, he wants the state only to organize everything but not to rule and to have power over the people so everyone could be his own ruler in a way. So um, his most important and most famous quote is property is theft. So this, what does this mean? This um, central quote means um, that no one that everyone who produces something should um, own it by itself. So he's against company owners, for example. So when I produce a car in a factory, I should own it by myself and not the company owner. So in this way, the company owner, um, I'm the company owner has authority over me, and as we know, he's against all kinds of authority. So um, Proudhon doesn't like this and wants everyone to be, have only authority about herself and not um, about others. Most of the philosophers saw a chance in the French Revolution to release their political theories. They had a big influence on today's political systems of all European Union members and other countries in the world.